Radio and welcome to another edition of Love What You Do, Do What You Love. I'm here with Salik Silverstein, director, filmmaker, producer, teacher, painter, father, painter, yeah. artist. Uh, yeah. You are an artist, yeah. that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks, mate. Thanks well, for that's where me. I started. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah. So, currently you're, you, you, you're a director, you're a filmmaker, that's how I got to know you. Mm. But take me back to how you got to doing what you do because I mean you're obviously here because you love what you do and you've mm. made um, you made a living from from doing that yeah my, my father never thought I could it was very tell upset. me more about it <laughs> tell, 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 tell me more about tell me more about the early days when you when 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 you became an artist because mm. obviously your father probably wanted you to be an accountant or oh, you know, like doctor like a doctor oh, yeah accountant wasn't good enough you're kidding it no. had to be a lawyer could have been good too a lawyer could and did yeah. anybody from your family become lawyers uh no most of my family are all artists i've got writers well, then, uh, then... musicians painters filmmakers oh, what a beautiful way to grow up in that and so tell yeah. me so you, you went to art school so yeah 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 I mean, i'd uh, been um uh, always drawing um my uh, english wasn't my first language um, so, uh, I guess in a way drawing became an expression. So and when you say, uh, it, did you, or did you, you immigrated over here? Uh, from... no, all my parents did, but okay. just like most immigrant parents, they spoke to you, to you in the native tongue. And until I went to school, yeah. I was surrounded by, uh, people of the old mother language. Uh, so school was really in a way, um, That's interesting because that, that yeah. happened to me too. I yeah. didn't speak a word of English until I started. Yeah. primary school yeah I didn't speak a word of English because yeah. all we spoke at home was Italian yeah, that's right and so drawing became especially at school uh, took me a while uh, to really cotton on to English um, so at school it was a lot of drawing my dad was always drawing as well so yeah. um, and I loved art I loved movies I used to go to the movies every Saturday every Saturday so is that you where know? you became your love to be like when okay from drawing you went to high school, is that where you started to sort of find your passion? So, hey, I, did you used to make movies? At yeah, home? Like I was most... making movies. Dad was always making movies. He was, uh, you know, super eight uh, freak. Uh, all the family photos everywhere, every time. Uh, there he was with the camera. Um, at uh, I think I was about twelve or thirteen. He bought me my first super eight camera. Yeah, and I started making films then. I guess I was more involved in the visual. Line so drawing, painting, filmmaking. You just enjoyed um, the create, the create, yeah. the, the, the creative process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I also uh, one of the interesting things was I could never imagine myself uh, with an ordinary job or a straight job. I couldn't imagine myself going to an office every day dressed in a suit. No, um, no I found different. that very, very difficult. Yeah, um, and um, my passion was always. Uh, in uh, in the arts, and I think the arts as well is a political thing. Because cool. um, that was back when well, we we're talking, we we're talking late seventies, eighties, yeah, around around that um, time. Or no, sixties, sixties, oh, yeah. beautiful. Fantastic. So I was definitely involved. Uh, you influenced, involved. yeah, yeah, and that influenced was... by all that kind of uh, uh, ferment that was going on, uh, especially with uh, the new art, abstract art that was. Um, yeah, and Australia uh, was it was, was a far di- oh so more different. different different place than it is now because yeah. now we're so open and everything is. So, yeah. Thing. Back then, yeah. we were so isolated, and I suppose yeah. when that stuff started to filter through, mm. it would have been a pretty exciting time, especially for somebody... Very exciting. Especially and somebody like yourself who was into, into painting and yeah. art and filmmaking, yeah. Yeah. and you would have seen this whole new genre of... Yeah, well, we um, uh, you could see uh, what was going on uh, in the art schools. Uh, I, basically, all I cared about in the last year of high school was uh, art, um, and uh, let all my other subjects go. Um, but uh, but I've always been a good reader anyway and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, and then, you know, sort of uh, the new Messiah came and opened up new doors, and that was Gough Whitlam. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's, um, yeah. You know, finally, uh, someone with a bit of power, uh, was someone who was uh, a prime minister into the arts. Fantastic. Um, I got my first uh, grant uh, yeah. in, I think it would have been 1970. Four from the Experimental Filmmakers Fund, while yeah. I, while I was at uh, art school, uh, doing. So you went to uni to uh, study, and, and you got an arts degree. Is that yeah? Yeah. yeah. Oh, back then it was a diploma. Was it, but okay. none of us cared about the piece of paper. No, no, no. It, you just, you, it would have been a beautiful environment to sort of cultivate. Yeah. And, and especially yeah. when you're working with other like-minded people. Yeah. Well, 
being at the art school, um, you know, you do painting, you do drawing, you do all those things, and it's really more to do with the interaction between uh, students and lecturers and developing uh, a philosophy, a viewpoint. Uh, and there was a guy there running the film course. It was just a sort of like this little pocket by itself, and there was a guy by the name of Bert Delling. Yeah. And Bert was one of the uh, godfathers of the, uh, of the new film uh, era. Uh, his first film was called Pure Shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, which opened up the doors to a lot of filmmakers. Uh, and he was a fantastic lecturer, um, encouraged us, uh, got us into the politics of film. Um, and, uh, yeah, a lot of people who uh, came from that uh, period um, still work in the industry, people like James Grant, who's a cinematographer. A lot of us um, continued on. For me, it was a great way to get my paintings to actually move. Fantastic. And, and also, you could really affect a big crowd. You could emotionally affect a big crowd. Uh, yeah. Art is still sort of rarefied in a way. Yeah. You go to a gallery. Yeah, correct. Or yeah, you yeah. buy a painting and it's at home. And it's at home. You know. With, with, with film. Yeah. You, you now, especially now with all the mediums yeah. that you can watch film on. Yeah. Yeah, it's convenient. And it was, it was perfect timing uh, for me too. I mean, I went to uh, Hollywood um, we all have those dreams of Hollywood. Yeah, t tell me about uh, that because you did. You went over to the States, didn't you? Yeah. And this this is where it, things got interesting. Yeah, 1976 I yeah. went across, yeah. Um, I'd had uh, made uh, two short films, uh, three short films on 16mm, uh, tucked under my arm and uh, uh, I made a, a living by d delivering the Los Angeles Times from one o'clock in the morning till six o'clock in the morning. And that's what, that's what fostered your... Uh, and uh, yeah. spent the rest of the day looking for work. Yeah. Um, uh, I finally started to make some headway through. Um, but um, f first of all, I didn't like Los Angeles. I found it a very tragic city. The, uh, we ca I can come from Australia. Um, the poverty uh, compared to... Uh, and the richness is so... Yeah, uh, such a divide. Um, it's a very violent society, uh, which I wasn't used to. It's the first time I'd saw, seen anybody got shot. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That would, that would um, be. I suppose culturally, it's very diverse. It's very different to what yeah. we're used to. But did you use that? Do you think that helped you in your uh, creating, uh, in, in your filmmaking, oh, yes. in your yeah. art? Because I yeah. mean, this, the, it, it's 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 the, the environments, the the what you see and what you take on yeah. as an artist. Yeah, usually comes through. Oh, m most definitely. And uh, there's a couple of things that happen. First of all, I ran into an Australian uh, cinematographer. Um, uh, his uh, name was uh, David. Um, oh, I've forgotten his surname, but he shot a fantastic Jim Sharman film called *The Night the Prowler*. Uh, it's a cult classic. If you can find it, it's just so ahead of its time. Um, and uh, he started me off. So I started to learn. Um, a lot of technical stuff uh, that I wasn't uh, really aware of. Um, the studios were amazing there, but one thing I found was that uh, I'm much more influenced by European uh, yeah. filmmakers. Yeah. And that was so alien there. Um, even the kind of films that I worked on, I found them uh, incredibly uh, industrial. Yeah. In that they weren't personal films, and it's, it is, it's an industrial uh, film industry over yeah, there. It's yeah. like working in a factory. Correct. Uh, there was one shoot that I did, um, uh, was involved in, that I, um, we went to the uh, rap party. We were like 50 unit on this film. Mm -hmm. There's like 2,000 people at this rap party. <laughs> Just, it wasn't a place for me. Also, I missed a really good uh, c coffees. Um, we yeah, was, well, I, you know, I, hear, I hear that about America. Yeah. Um, and I don't think things have gotten any better. I suppose now there are Australians that have moved over there. I've heard there's a whole group of Aussies that have actually set up coffee shops. Yeah, they have. Mel Melbourne-style coffee yep. shops. Yep, yep. And, uh, yep. yeah. Uh, uh, so, um, um, yeah, I s sort of came back. I worked for South Australian government for a while as their audiovisual officer. Uh, and then I got into the AFTRS. Yeah. Um, which was uh, a as big a, surprise for me as a student. As a student, yeah. Okay. Um, that was. And the, those that know, that don't know what that is, what what's the? That's the that's Australian the... Film, uh, Television and Radio School. Okay. Which still, which still runs, Sydney. which still runs. Today. Oh yeah, yeah. Still runs. Today, oh, it's yeah. An, it was an amazing place. Um, and uh, people like Jane Campion. 
yeah. uh, Alex Proyas, they were in, uh, in my intake. Um, there were, oh, look, uh, uh, PJ Hogan, of course, who did murials. Uh, it was a, a, a great place. Uh, it was really, we got more out of the students than we did from the lecturers. Yeah, no, uh, that's awesome. You know, how you get, that's what I loved about filmmaking. Filmmaking is a community art form. Yeah. And the people you work with are also passionate. Most yeah. of them are crazy. But I think I, th I think any anybody that's it, whether that you're making films, music, or whatever, you have to have a sense of craziness. You have yes. to have, you have to have a sense of something because yes. we all know we don't do it for the money; we do it for the love. <laughs> okay, and yeah. that, that's that's it. And also, it's almost like you. Uh, um, I liken it to an addiction. Once it's in your system, oh yeah, yeah, it's so hard to yes. get out, uh, isn't it? Yep. And tell me, you did you yep. didn't you you did a feature that yeah. you went? Oh, even before that, uh, what does uh, the film school, uh, I was able to do a few music videos That's while it, I, was I there. remember. Oh, yeah, you yeah. were telling me My you first were doing one that, yeah. was for a band called I'm Joe's Music, uh, which was a New Zealand band. Um, and uh, I really loved that art form. I'm a failed musician. That's okay. okay. Eight years of guitar. And so I can my musicianship is questionable yeah. as well. So well eight, like, years of, eight years of guitar, I can yeah. only play three chords. That's all right, three chords, you know, yeah. Well, they got the needles uh, across the line. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, but uh, it was a chance to be a musician as well as a filmmaker and an experimental filmmaker because most of us then were pushing, pushing the movies. medium. Also, you know? you're making a movie in three minutes. Yeah, that's right. So, good. so, so but a lot of people think that's an easy, easy thing to do, but mm. it's the hardest thing to do is to actually create something mm -hmm. within a, a short period yep. window yep. that en engages you yep. all the way through. It's a great discipline. Yeah. Um, it uh, impacted uh, in such a positive way in uh, later life with doing features and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, you also learn to work very quickly. Yeah. Uh, you also learn how to shoot uh, or make a clip on the smell of an oily rag. I was going to say, you learn how to be resourceful. Yeah, very resourceful. When you don't have resources, you become resourceful. Yeah. And you go, okay. Yeah. And then you call in favours and this yeah. and that. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and, and it was great. Saying. I worked with some fantastic musicians. Mm. And there was a whole group of us uh, coming about that time. There was people like Richard Lowenstein, uh, Paul Goldman, um, Andrew Dominic. I mean, the list goes on and on. Um, the generation that came out of that actually had such an effect uh, on um, on the film industry in yeah. general. We were the new generation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a new voice. Yeah. Uh, a lot of it was an angry voice uh, about what society was, um, and also the new technology. And I'm one that believes that um, technology uh, informs creativity. Yeah. And creativity also informs technology. Cool. And a lot of us were embracing this technology. Um, it was just the start of the digital video era yep. as well. Uh, we got to work on machinery where we could warp yeah. uh, the imagery. Yeah. And so you became painters. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, that was uh, that was great. Um, uh, Andrea and I. Uh, uh, we had a, oh, we still got the company, Beat Films, uh, for about six, seven years there. Uh, we're doing a lot of music videos, and it was great fun. We were talking the 80s there? Yep. The 80s. Yeah, yeah. And then then, yeah. then the feature. Tell me more about the feature, because you you were lucky enough to actually... Uh, yeah, did you, write, did, did you write? Did you write? No, Headley Gritter wrote the... Uh, okay. You know, Headley's got a uh, show on uh, Triple, uh, Triple R. Okay. Uh, oh, Headley, yes. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. the Saturday night party yeah, yeah. show. Um, yes, <laughs> um, and Headley and I go right back to uh, school days, primary school, awesome. and um, uh, he uh, also was the king of low budget um, uh, TVCs, television commercials. Yeah. Uh, he's the genius behind Ken Bruce has gone mad, and things like that. Okay. Yeah, um, Franco Cozzo and things like that, uh, and I'd been working on the opposite end. Um, what was interesting that happened towards the end of the 80s and beginning of the 90s was advertising agencies and production companies were starting to look for the new voice, yeah, yeah, uh, the new style. Um, uh, ads are, uh, on TV are really youth-oriented, they're yeah, youth-driven. Yeah. Uh, even today, it's still a great percentage of that. Uh, so um, I was uh, approached by Fred Skepsis' company, which was uh, Film House, uh, to come and do commercials. Oh, cool. Um, I did it sort of reluctantly. That's what I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you, as an artist, 
um, how did you how did you tussle with that that feel that okay I know, I know economic reality yeah has to kick in at some sort yeah but we all have that uh, thing like so you went and you're doing now you're in the corporate sector how yeah. did how did that sit with you um, well it was interesting because in actual fact the thing that motivated me was the offer of uh, them uh, supporting and financing a feature film. That, <laughs> that was the carrot. Oh, I love that it. That was the carrot. I love it. If yeah. I'm going in, you're yeah, going yeah. Yeah, cool. um, I had great reluctance. Like, I think most of us doing uh, music videos, uh, we saw it as uh, a commercialisation of art form, manipulation, propaganda. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I sort of went into it reluctantly, but in a way I found where I could do my art form. Mm. Um, I was very lucky. The scripts that I got were fantastic scripts, great oh, writers. Um, but um, And I, I got to use some amazing equipment, shoot 35 millimeter. I wanted a hothead. Uh, to shoot a scene with, I got a hothead. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the budgets were there. And yeah. you know what? Also, you probably would, you probably, unbeknownst to yourself, uh, developed a new, another discipline oh, most in your definitely. filmmaking. Because like your music videos, yeah. Yeah. you've got to do it quick and da da da. Yeah. The same with that when you're doing TVCs, you have to, you don't, you don't have the luxury of, of time. No. And you've you've got, got deadlines, you've got right. things and so oh, on. Oh, man, the pressure is on. And, yeah. But also, um, the learning of telling a story in 30 seconds, you learn uh, what is fat and what's unnecessary. Yeah. Uh, that's a real discipline in itself. Uh, but I worked with some great people, um, uh, art directors, uh, uh, cinematographers. I learned a lot from some of the great cinematographers I worked with. Yeah. Uh, plus, I, I made a good living. That's it. You know, music no, 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 videos. Just... Music videos. It was always a struggle. Yeah. yeah you know. Yeah, yeah, At yeah. one stage, uh, one year, we did ten. Yeah. Just to you know, and we were still behind in uh, in uh, in a wage. You yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I understand. But uh, uh, it, it was interesting. Uh, so um, I uh, ended up leaving Film House. I also learnt about. Um, uh, the business side. Uh, thank you very much, Rob Latet from Film House, uh, because I left uh, there and um, they ended up suing me for a breach of contract, oh. uh, which uh, was a really interesting game. Um, and uh, well, I got around that, um, and I ended up working uh, with uh, another company called uh, Great Southern Films. Oh uh, yeah. Great Southern, no yeah. Doubt. Which at that stage uh, was one of the top production companies, uh, and lovely scripts, great people to work with. Cool. Uh, but I came, uh, became quite uh, uh, disillusioned. Yeah, yeah. I kept thinking, what am I selling? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah how I am hear, I brother. affecting I hear, the world? I hear, brother. You know, because changing it, the world one TVC at a time. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, because the thing is, essentially, uh, TVCs they want you to buy things you don't necessarily need. Well, oh, that's what advertising um, is. Isn't yeah, it? Um, you're not good they enough. The demand. Yeah, you're not good enough unless you drive this car or sporty enough or if. So you, so you started to question. So you had those moral questions. Well, so they'd come up. They're always been. They're always bubbling away. And, and, and so in the meantime, I'm always painting. Of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm always yeah. doing yeah. Uh, painting, and I'm also doing uh, little films and things that are away from advertising. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I did uh, some work with uh, some schools uh, in the Catholic primary school system. Uh, did a musical, uh, which is absolutely fantastic. A fantastic. Twenty-minute musical. Uh, the kids were just great to work with. Um, and this is what you're doing now, too, aren't you? You're yeah, really teaching. Yeah, yeah. Um, doing more of that kind of stuff. Um, so uh, towards the end of the 2000s, I really just wanted to get out of it. And we had a, um, a, a Headley uh, came to me and he said, look, I had this guy approach me. Uh, he's got $2.5 million and he wants us to make a feature film. He met this writer director in America um, and he wants to bring it here and shoot. So we had a look at it. The script was actually quite uh, good. Yeah. And we thought, well, why not? Let's do it. So myself, um, Headley and uh, our other partner, uh, Murray Sestak, um, we produced this film. Yeah. Uh, it worked out really good. The director was horrible. He was just... So you produced it? You didn't direct yeah. it yourself? Yeah, I produced it. Um, okay. But I was also brought in, just in case the director didn't work, to take and, over the directing. And what happened? I refused to take over halfway through the film. Yeah. And so, um, uh, but it struggled through. Uh, it was... Uh, 
uh, sold to Showcase in America, played cable television. But the interesting thing out of that was um, uh, the money that was there was actually stolen money, which we didn't realise till after the film had so been So you're finished. actually laundering money. Well, actually yeah, laundering. <laughs> yeah. So the money came to us. We put it in the bank. Everyone got paid about two or three weeks after the film finished. Um, uh, the... Uh, uh, there was a story in the newspaper about, what's his name, Green, Sam Green, Simon Green, I can't remember what his name was, who got killed uh, in Laos. Uh, and it came out that he had stolen $25 million. Uh, f uh, he was a lawyer, so he was pilfering from people's trust and got murdered in uh, Cambodia or so... Laos. And then we found out that that was part of the money. That was the trial. Yeah, so the, um, uh, so the creditors ended up owning that film. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's very cool. Okay. But we were very relieved that all, everyone got paid. Everyone got paid. And also, what's that? Yeah. For people that don't know it, it was called... It was called Dead End. Dead End. Yeah. Okay. So that was really good. Um, and we'd ha got the uh, feature film bug. Yeah. Uh, and Headley, in a week, had written a, a script and... Uh, with, uh, called Trojan Warrior. Oh, okay, yes. Yeah, um, he uh, was a big fan of Stan Longanides. The, Stan the man Longanides. The kickboxing star and wrote something for him. Uh, and next thing you know, we're on to our second feature. Fantastic. Um, and and uh, how did that go for you? Oh, look, it was great. Uh, first of all, it was an ode to... Um, uh, it was an ode to Australia's Ausploitation period. Yeah. We loved those movies. Yeah. Um, uh, it was a great period, uh, and it was very anti-establishment. Cool. Uh, it was fantastic to shoot. Uh, it was uh, we got the money. Yeah. Um, it was all private investment, which was uh, really interesting. Uh, ended up on thirty-five screens across Australia in the cinema, which we were stunned. Originally, That's it was just going to be man. a DVD release. That's awesome. Um, what's his name? I can't remember the guy's name uh, from from Village, saw yep. some of the footage, and he said, I want it. Awesome. Yeah, so we ended up there, uh, got a um, good DVD release uh, in the United States, um, uh, Serbia, um, England. So, oh, man. Yeah. He, uh... <laughs> oh, my God, that's awesome, mate. That's yeah. awesome. Um, so, uh, and that was, that was uh, fantastic, but all of that stuff that I'd been going through with music videos mm. and commercials... I'm so glad that I had done it because yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it gave me that basis. You don't, you don't, you don't realise you know? what you do and how much knowledge and what you're accumulating yep. when you're doing it. And yep. then you sort of, maybe that was the universe. That's your your, yes. your apprenticeship. That yes. was your apprenticeship. Most because you had to develop it. Because if you had done that from the get-go, yeah. you don't know. Yeah. Could... And one of the great things of commercials, and if people listen to commercials, is the sound work on them. Yeah. I'd been dealing music videos. Okay, yeah. you get a record yeah. and that's it. Yeah. Uh, your short films you make, uh, often you don't have budgets to do sound sure. or do it really well. Um, and in commercials, uh, oh, with some of the great sound people, uh, not only re uh, doing jingles, uh, like Mike Brady, mm -hmm. um, but sound, uh, creating soundscapes. Um, and you realise how important sound was. Sounds very important. Yeah, I, I mean, it's 50% of the picture. So I always say you that. Know, and, I think Trojan Warrior shows that it's got a fantastic uh, soundscape to it. Excellent. It's really, really well done. Um, and we had a ball doing it. Awesome. Absolutely. At, um, that was done at that time at, uh, um, uh, at, uh, with uh, Duron. Oh, Duron, down at the Music and Effects. Yeah, and we had no budget. And Duron was fantastic. He said, come on in, you can do it, you know. That's uh, awesome. When you get money back from the movie, you can pay me back. And, That's uh, a good way to and do it. Oh, look, he was fantastic. And the group oh, people fantastic. were fantastic. So, and, yeah. and now, what are we up to now? What are you doing now? Now, um, uh, so, yeah, I lecture um, uh, in filmmaking. Yeah. Uh, paint, I'm still painting. Fantastic. Uh, occasionally uh, shoot uh, for my brother's company. Beautiful. Um, but company. painting and, and you still paint, that's, all, that, that's, fan that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, oh, I, I love that's it. A, that's, a nice, that's a nice way to sort of see, because it sounds like you've had such a great journey. <laughs> and now you're sort of teaching, you're, you're mentoring young crew. Oh, and, that's, and that's the thing. And it, what it does is, is it gives me an opportunity to go and corrupt minds. 
<laughs> I don't think so, mate. Oh, yeah, they, I, I, get they'd in be there. They'd, I reckon they'd be happy to have you there, mate. Yeah, no, happy. no, no, no. I get in there. First thing I say to the students is all film is politics. Yes. You know, and it's uh, there for you to bring out your point of view. Uh, it's really interesting um, that a lot of the people that I'm teaching uh, are kind of get so much um, news from the internet, but it's so limited. Mm. Um, you know, and uh, the other day when I was talking to them about uh, what was happening with the ABC and how important it is for them to keep to yeah. keep ABC yeah. and get properly funded, that's their future. Yeah. So many kids didn't know about it. No. So it's my job to go, go that's and it. go and protest. Fantastic. Go and, uh, and you know say this or that. You no, know? that's that's so. you back from the, from the sixties. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Thank I really appreciate oh, coming. Thank you very in. much. It's been a pleasure. Uh, yeah. I hope. Uh, yeah. Someone get something from it? They will, buddy. Thank you so <laughs> and much. And if you've got a job out there for me, this is the man. <laughs>